Hey there, it's Tuesday, August the 10th, and I recorded this a couple of weeks ago. I was at the beach, but it was raining. There was even a tornado warning on the beach, and they cleared us off, so I got safe inside. So I decided to go to one of the Bible studies I made on tape and make it the meditation for you today on this August 10th with Day to Day with St. Joseph. And I'm uh, right under the fan here. And uh, if I stand up high enough, I might even be able to get a little haircut. But uh, just uh, taking, it, taking it easy with you and the Word of God. Here's advice from St. Peter, chapter 4, that I think also is the advice that St. Joseph, as patron of the Universal Church, would want us to hear. The Mysteries Scriptural Support St. Joseph the Just Since the days of fulfillment are at hand Support us Therefore be serious and sober for prayers Above all let your love for one another be intense Because love covers a multitude of sins be hospitable to one another without complaining. As each one has received the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever preaches, let it be with the words of God. Whoever serves, let it be with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 4. All right, let's get started with the Bible study. Okay, now we have Joseph, and it's the year of Joseph, and what would he be busy about doing? He'd be trying to inspire us. And as this reading says, he would be trying to inspire us to preach the gospel by our words, by our actions. And the real true gospel, the full gospel. And also he would ask us to serve. Joseph is known as the great servant saint, and he served Jesus directly. Well, he wants to remind us that we are serving Jesus, that we can't see Jesus like a babe or a boy or a young man in our, in our circle. Indeed, Jesus is with us. He is Emmanuel. That's the title of Jesus. Joseph reminds us that the angels even said that to Mary and Joseph. Yes, that here is God with us, Emmanuel, which the prophecies of Isaiah said that we would have an Emmanuel come to among us. So Joseph is patron of the Universal Church, and we take Peter's two epistles. Remember the Catholic epistles, of which First and Second Peter are part of them, and they're written just out to the universal church, you know, just like John's three epistles were and the epistle of Jude was, okay? So an epistle out to the universal church. And it starts off with the verse we started in, 1 Peter chapter 4. It says, therefore, well, there's a lot of advice that comes up to that point. And then he says, therefore, and this is where we pick it up, okay? So he says, be serious, be serious. Yes, we live in serious times, and we can either be men and women and young folks of conviction, or we can just kind of kid around and be half-hearted and half there in our faith. But if you remember in the, in the uh, Catholic epistle of uh, the book of Revelation, uh, Jesus, speaking from heaven to one of the churches, says, I'd rather you not be lukewarm, either hot or cold. I don't want lukewarm followers. And so be serious. Be serious about the call, about a vocation in baptism, about the need for the world to have Jesus meet them through us. You know, the need to save souls. Be serious. Be serious about the commands of the Lord. These aren't suggestions. These are commands. 
This is what he asks us to do as his children. Okay, now that's the first advice out of nine pieces of advice in 1 Peter 4. Number two, be sober for prayers. Be sober so we can be distracted and intoxicated by the world and all the various things that can pull our attention away and not really have the time to pray, to read the scriptures, to go to mass and to have family time or have time with our dear friends to build up our relationships in Christ, to have time to spread the gospel, to serve the way of the gospel. So it says, be sober and be sober for prayers. Pray in what you think God wants you to do, okay? Uh, it's good to know what God wants and to hear it, it's often prayer. Although we can hear it on our way, along the way, we can pick up the signals that what God wants to do. But praying is certainly one of the best ways of discerning God's will. Ask and you shall receive. Okay, the third piece of advice is love. And that every list should have love on it as, as what we ought to be doing as Christians, right? It says from First Peter, and again, hear it from Joseph in his ministry to the church right now, saying, love one another. You know, be intense. Be strong in your love. Okay? Live from the heart. Love from the heart. You have a Jesus heart in you. The sacred heart is united to your heart. Let that unconditional love of God come forth. And then he says, because love covers a multitude of sins. And we're filled with fear and we're filled with, with hate and we're filled with division and many other things that are not love. But we need love to, to cover over that multitude of sins that are going on in the world. Advice number four be hospitable and without complaining. Be hospitable without complaining. So, be caring. I think the word hospitable almost sounds like be a hospital. <laughs> be a place like the church is, Pope Francis says the church is like a hospital. We want people to come in who are hurting. We want people to come in who have needs. We want people to come in who want to be loved you know, are lonely, okay? And so the church and our little circle of friends, our families of faith, okay? We can be hospitable, okay? Without complaining. Oh, there's, gosh, there's plenty of things to complain about and be critical about and to just be negative about. But hospitality is not about being negative. It's about being warm and caring. I heard about a priest who's newly assigned now to, to a parish. And uh, how's it going, Father? You know, he says, these people complain a lot. That was his first comment about his new parish. Isn't that awful? Okay, that's advice number five in this scripture passage. Joseph would want you to hear this. As each has received a gift, use it in service to one another. Well, we are all gifted in different ways. And the gifts of God, okay, are in us as each has received a gift. And they can be very different kind of gifts that you have and I have. So living them out can look very differently, different from one another. And yet, those gifts all blend together in the end. God uses all the gifts to do his good purposes. And it says, use it in service of one another. Uh, today we're very self-centered a lot of the time that we're spending and stuff on the computer on the phone you know with devices electronic things um, you know it just seems to be self-directed but the gifts of God are used for the service of one another and so let us let us see what gifts we have and what gifts we can share okay we're on to advice number six out of nine okay in this year of Joseph or really any year, what is the universal church supposed to be doing? Okay, well, it's supposed to be doing what God asked from the very start in the Eden Garden of Paradise, to be stewards of God's grace, to be stewards, be fruitful and multiply and take care of this world that I've set you upon. Well, 
We have a new Adam and Eve. So there's been a recreation in Christ, okay? We have now Christ in us. We have the Spirit poured out upon us. We're also being directed. Everything is meaningful in the end. Even our sorrows, our losses, our scars, we're getting used still to the big plan of God. Let us be stewards of God's grace. Let's graciously live the things that are going on in our lives and, and just say, God, uh, may I live to your favor, okay? I want to be a steward. I think St. Joseph would say, remember what Jesus taught about, uh, about those who serve at a table. Are they telling the master what to do? Or are they just doing their job trying to, to serve the master? Well, Jesus gave that as one of the parables. And so St. Joseph was serving under God and the Lord who was in his very house. He was serving, okay? And we have to be stewards of God's gifts. In the end, Jesus said, well done, my good and faithful servant. That's in Matthew 25. It's a great thing that Jesus says to those who are stewards of God's grace. Also, Jesus says, you've been uh, to the one who is a good steward, uh, to the household, I've put him in charge. Now I can bring him up higher to greater things. All right, now we get to the seventh advice. Whoever preaches, okay, <laughs> well, uh, we are to preach the word of God, okay? We are to speak about how Jesus is in our life and what the church is doing and how the church is blessing us. That the mystical body isn't just a, an institution. It is the body of believers and that there's Christ, the head of the body of the church. And we are the embodiment in Christ. We're not just an organization like other organizations. We are the embodiment. We are to preach then what the call is of Christ, the new life of Christ, and to be like Christ, okay? We're not to preach politics or our secular concerns or our biased opinions, okay? We have plenty of that, and we have lots of people passing out all information, but what about the gospel, okay? What about the gospel? We are to live this gospel of Christ, well, the birds arrived, so uh, time to wrap it up means we've gone past 12 minutes. Whoever preaches, preach that word of God. Live the living word of God in you, okay? And whoever serves is the eighth point, okay? Whoever serves. The whoever is any Christian. That's the whoever, and that's you. That's myself. Whoever serves, let it be what God supplies. So not necessarily with intellectual ability or physical ability, right? It's more about attitude, others. It's about availability. Like Joseph, he's a servant. He's a dad. He's a worker. He's a husband. He's a, he's a believer in the village. That's how he serves. And then it wraps up in our scripture today and our thoughts today, so that in all things God may be glorified in Jesus Christ, who belongs glory and dominion. Okay, so nine points there. That's the ninth point, to glorify the Lord in all things. So St. Joseph, that's what he's trying to inspire in us. Hey, let's let it happen. This is Father Barry, day to day with St. Joseph. Therefore, be serious and sober for prayers. Above all, let your love for one another be intense, because love covers a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without complaining. As each one has received the gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's very grace. Whoever preaches, let it be with the words of God. Whoever serves, let it be with the strength that God supplies, so that in all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. 1 Peter 4.